chemotaxis. So what are the defects of chemotaxis of neutrophil? Chemotaxis defect. So whenever the moment I call the chemotaxis defects, there are these are generally referred to as something called LADs, that's called leukocyte adhesion defects. So you have LAD type 1, you have LAD type 2 and you have LAD type 3. LA type 1 we have already described. It is due to mutation in the gene called integrin beta 2 that is called ITG B2 and specifically the molecule that is defective is CD18 of the beta 2 integrin which you have discussed already. Isn't it? So already I told you about that. So then uh, you have LAD type 2 that is called leukocyte adhesion deficiency type 2 where the the uh, defective gene is called FUG2, FUCD2, where the defective component will be Sire Lewis X. So, this is what the defective component. Uh, in fact, it is not only Sire Lewis X defect, it is also due to defective fucosylation because the Sire Lewis X will be active only after fucos process called fucosylation. There will be defective fucosylation of all selecting ligands, not only Sire Lewis X. All, all selecting ligands, all selecting ligands. So that's what is going to result in leukocyte adhesion deficiency type 2. But in general, one of the selecting ligands is Sire Lewis X, and that is what is very important to understand here. That's why I told you that specifically. That's called LAD2, leukocyte adhesion defect type 2. And uh, LAD type 3 is due to something called FERM3, the FERMT3 gene that is defective here. And uh, what is the, you know, like uh, primary defect here is all integrins will be defective. Not only beta 2 or beta 1, all the integrins will be defective here. Integrins are nothing but ligands for, you know, like uh, your uh, VCAM1 and ICAM1, cell adhesion molecules. So all integrins will be defective, which means activation defect, especially all integrins will have something called activation defect. So which means, what is the problem? LAD type 1 is a primary adhesion defect because it involves that integrin, isn't it? CD18. So especially typically the beta 2 integrin. And LAD type 3 is also a primary adhesion defect because it also involves integrin. Integrin means it's adhesion, we already discussed. But whereas even though it's called leukocyte adhesion defect type 2, LAD2 is actually a primary rolling defect. It's not a adhesion defect usually. So what are the general features of all this leukocyte adhesion deficiency type? And one more important thing is all are autosomal recessive. So it's very easy to, easy to remember. All are autosomal recessive in inheritance. The general features will be patient will be having recurrent infections, especially bacterial because neutrophils are very important for, I mean, uh, fighting against your bacterial and fungal infections. So recurrent infections, typically bacterial and fungal, very important here. And second thing, patients will not have any pus formation because they cannot do chemo tax. they cannot go to the site of infection so how can you produce a pus if you don't have a site I mean, they don't go to the site of infection and uh, patient will have leukocytosis because they cannot move and they stay within the vascular compartment it appears the patient is having high level of neutrophils simple that's why you have leukocytosis and patient will have delayed umbilical cord separation and this is what is very important for exam key delayed umbilical cord separation. Why they go for delayed umbilical cord separation? The reason is because this umbilical cord separation you need neutrophils to uh, remove the dead tissues and detach the umbilicus outside because here the neutrophil migration is defective and chemotaxis is defective. You can't produce uh, umbilical cord separation yearly. That's why you have a very delayed umbilical separation. This is a very very key point in exams to diagnose a leukocyte adhesion defect. Very important. And next thing, patients may have Glanzmann's thrombasthenia like picture. So where the patient will have defective platelet uh, adhesion also. So Glanzmann's thrombasthenia like picture. Typically this is seen only in LAD type 3, not in LAD 1 or LAD 2. And how will you diagnose? How will you diagnose? Type 1 is very easy to find out because it is typically defective CD18 so I can easily find out by flow cytometry. If you know the principle of flow cytometry, all the CD molecules 
the moment it comes as CD, it's very easy to analyze by flow cytometry. CD18 defect, so see the amount of CD18 in the neutrophils. If it's low, it's straightforward diagnosis, that is LA type 1. So flow cytometry is the gold standard here. This LAD type 2 and type 3 can be detected only by genetic analysis. Genetic analysis, incidence is also very rare and general treatment for all these defects is allogenic stem cell transplant. Nothing else you can do about it. You have, it's a genetic defect. And then uh, you have another form of chemotaxis defect that's called a lazy leukocyte syndrome. Lazy leukocyte syndrome. So here the main problem will be the neutrophil chemotaxis. It's also a chemotaxis defect where the migration of the neutrophil will be defective. Chemotaxis will not happen. But what is the cause of the disorder, we don't know. So what is the precise area of defect, we don't know. But this is what we refer to as something called a lazy leukocyte syndrome. So in this condition, I told you leukocyte adhesion defect will have recurrent infections with neutrophilia. But in lazy leukocyte syndrome, patient will have recurrent infections with neutropenia, not neutrophilia. They will have neutropenia. But remember, the bone marrow reserve is normal. The bone marrow granulocyte reserve is normal which means in the bone marrow the amount of granulocytes that are produced will be completely normal but they can't move out of the bone marrow because of the defective chemotaxis that's what we refer to as lazy leukocyte syndrome and we don't have any known cause for this particular syndrome extremely rare incidence but how will you find out it's really a lazy leukocyte syndrome because you are going to use a test called ATO colonolone etiocolonolone test so where injection of this etiocolonolone normally results in uh, increased neutrophil mobilization increased neutrophil mobilization which means after injecting this you have to see increased amount of neutrophils in the blood or increased amount of neutrophils should be released out of the bone marrow but even after injection of this etiocolonolone if you don't see sufficient neutrophil in the blood and if you have still low amount of neutrophils which means it's a chemotaxis defect and you can diagnose this lazy leukocyte syndrome this could be a very potential question in the basics so that's called etiocolonolone test so which is useful for identifying a defect called lazy leukocyte syndrome